if you are in this situation right now, kind of like I was about a month ago, where you were tired of how your kitchen cabinets looked, they were outdated, maybe too dark for your liking, and you don't wanna shell out money to get them professionally refinished, and also you don't have it in your budget to get them completely replaced, well, stick around because this video is for you. Hey, this is Yami, your Latina next door. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I am in my newly painted kitchen. I just recently shared my kitchen reveal where I did an overhaul and repainted my kitchen cabinets to lighten the space up. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this video because you too want to do the same. And this is the video where I share step-by-step -step everything I do and what I use in order to get as close to a professional finish. Now, a couple of things before I start. I do want to mention that this is not a sponsored post in any way. I will be sharing different kinds of products that I use and have come to love over the time that I have been painting cabinets in my home. I am not a professional. I just am an avid DIYer and I prefer to do things on my own to save money. Now, I will be sharing the color that I use to paint my kitchen cabinets white, but I know several of you who saw my reveal video have been wondering what my paint color is on my walls that you see back there. And before I start, I don't wanna forget, that color is Repose Gray by Sherwin-Williams. It is my favorite go-to neutral gray. It has no mauve undertones, no blue undertones, and no brown undertones. It is seriously the most neutral gray and I use it everywhere in my home. Now this video is jam packed with a ton of information. I am literally gonna tell you everything that I do when I paint a kitchen cabinet, all the products I use, any tips that I have to share along the way. So make sure you sit back, relax, and enjoy all the information that you're about to get. Let's go ahead and get started with my process. All right, the first thing you wanna do is remove all of the cabinet doors and hardware from your wall units. Now make sure that as soon as you remove your cabinets, you label them. And a way that we have found or my husband has found to be the easiest way is to number them from one end of the kitchen all the way around. And the top one is usually T1, T2, T3. And then he starts at the same place, bottom, B1, B2, B3, so that we can keep track of what door goes on which cabinet. It will make the installation when we're all finished a lot easier. And what we use is basically just some regular frog tape. I like frog tape because it is a little bit more sensitive um, toward you know your cabinetry or your walls or whatever. Um, and so we like to use this one and basically just take a pen or a Sharpie and just put it on one side of the cabinet doors. Now, you're gonna be like, well, yummy, I'm cleaning him, I'm you know, gonna be painting them. Well, when you're working on one side of the cabinet door, you have the tape on the other. When you have to flip it over and work on the other side, you remove it and put it on the other side of the cabinet. That way you always have a sticker on it and know exactly what goes where. All right, so after you remove them from the actual wall units, you're gonna to wanna to put those doors in a place like a garage. And you will be surprised that I do not sand any of my cabinetry, my doors or anything before I prep them for paint. I just use a really good cleaner and deglosser and this is what I recommend. The um, M1 Paint Deglosser and Pre-Paint Cleaner. I like this because it works both on latex and oil-based finishes. It's also safe to use indoor and outdoor. It comes ready to use. Um, I'll just, basically, all I do is put it in a glass bowl and I use a lint-free rag. Um, I have these that I like to use and I'll make sure to link all of this stuff below for you guys. You can also use a, an old uh, t-shirt. That works just fine as well. But basically, you put this in a bowl, you wet the rag, and you clean all of your cabinetry. Now, the reason you wanna do this is because you're gonna want to take that shiny, um, you know, outer finish of the cabinet so that your primer can adhere a lot better. Also, the kitchen is a place that we all cook. There's grease, there's oil, there's steam, there's heat, and there's lots of stuff that gets on the cabinets because these are the cabinets that we open and close the most. So you're gonna to wanna to give it a nice good cleaning before you start anything. Now again, while you're using this, you wanna use some gloves to protect your hands. Um, I do recommend some nitrile gloves and I use these a lot for whenever I do you know, smaller projects, craft projects and small painting projects around the house 
these are nice and a little bit more affordable. Now I do have another option that are a lot more industrial and a lot more rip resistant. And I really like these for painting with thicker paints and stuff like cabinetry. And these are called the Venom Steel um, Nitrile Gloves. And these are highly rip, rip resistant and they work very well. I will also go ahead and link these in the description box below. All right, so I wanna jump in real quick and give y'all a quick disclaimer. Now, these were the cabinets and how they look like before I painted them. As you can see, they have a very professional finish and they're in very good shape. This is obviously why we did not have to sand them. However, if you have cabinets that have a previous DIY job that is absolutely horrible, there's chipping, there's drip lines, there's strokes, you definitely do want to sand before doing any priming at all whatsoever. Now, the good thing is that you don't need to sand down to the bare wood. All you need to do is make sure that everything is sanded and smooth. All right, so not only are you gonna wash those doors, both on the outside and on the inside, because I do like to paint my doors both on the outside and on the inside panels because it just looks a lot more professional. You're gonna also want to use that wash on the cabinetry that's remaining on the actual, you know, the kitchen on the, t on the walls and on the base. Now, I don't clean the inside of my cabinetry because I don't paint the inside of my cabinetry. And I'll show you kind of what areas I actually do paint up on the inside in order for everything to look nice and fresh wherever the doors touch. I will give you guys a close up of that. Okay, so after you have cleaned all of your cabinets and let them dry, make sure you follow those instructions on the bottle, okay? Um, so after that's done, then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna lay a drop cloth where you're gonna have those cabinets sitting so that you can paint them. And I will also link below a few options for drop cloth. Um, also, if you don't care about getting paint on your garage floor, that's totally fine. You don't need one. <laughs> but there is something that I do recommend because you're going to want to raise them from the floor, wherever they're at. You're going to want to use these little stands. Now, you can get these at any hardware store and they can look like this or something like this. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to lay these on the bottom or on the floor, wherever you're going to have your cabinet, and you're going to lay it the cabinet right on top. So it's gonna sit above the floor. Okay, now you don't necessarily have to use these because these things right here, if you have kids, you know what they are. <laughs> and they're usually all over the place. These things work just fine. They're about the same height and you can totally use them for the corners of your cabinets to sit them on top it won't cost you anything and look there's even some paint on it so yes i definitely use these when i don't have enough of those to prop up my cabinet doors okay so after everything has been cleaned and deglossed and everything is completely dry you are ready to prime then right before you prime you just want to make sure that you tape off any areas that you don't want to get paint on now um you can do this on the walls on the base of your cabinets, like near your floors, as well as inside your cabinetry where you want the paint to stop. I do recommend frog tape because it has the less amount of, I guess, seepage <laughs> underneath the tape. You get a lot crisper lines with this and it's a lot, um, I, I find it to be a little bit more delicate on your surfaces. Now, since my husband and I have painted a lot, we don't find it necessary to cover the ground. But one thing that if you do not feel comfortable and do wanna cover up the ground, I do recommend one product, which is kind of cool. It's basically a blue tape with plastic on the bottom. And basically you just peel it off like this, put it down on the floor and then pull back this plastic right here. It's so easy to install. It definitely pulls out, it goes out to about 48 inches. So it gives you really good coverage on the floor. If you are scared that you might get paint splatter on the floor of your kitchen, it just depends on how well seasoned you are and how comfortable you are with that. Now, the best primer that I recommend for this is an oil-based primer. And I prefer the one from Sherwin-Williams, which is called the Pro Block primer. Now this thing retails about $35, $40, I believe. Um, but I do like it and I will show you in a clip 
what it actually happens to a piece of furniture or cabinet or whatever when you do not use an oil-based paint underneath especially when you have wood cabinets like mine mine are actual wood cabinets there's gonna be veining there's gonna be knots in your cabinetry as well as oil stains because it is where we cook so if you have any of those on your cabinets and you don't want them seeping through your paint and your lovely hard work definitely use an oil-based primer you will find, and I have a really big um, a stir stick here. You don't need one this big, but this is the only one that I can find that was not used. Um, you will find that obviously, just like paint, you're gonna have to mix it very well. A lot of oil-based primers feel really runny when you are working with them, when you're stirring them, when you're pouring them, they're like really watery. And then when you apply it, like whether it's a brush or a roller, you're gonna find that it kind of like drags and it wants to stay stuck to where you are applying it. And it's so weird because the consistency in the actual can is really runny. Now, I have found that this does that less. Now, there is another one you can use. There is one by Zenser. It's an oil-based primer as well that you can use, um, but just know it will maybe drag a little bit more than this one does. So that's been my experience. I have used both. They both function, but just those are like the differences between the one from Sherman Williams and the one from a zinser. So this is what happens when you have a piece of wood that you paint over with latex paint, but it happens to have like a knot or a, an oil stain underneath. This will eventually seep through and you can see there's more back there. Now this is my very first furniture DIY and this little table is super old and we've kind of have it right now in the basement and we've always pretty much had it for maybe um, in the garage for potting stuff. So it's pretty beat up and that's why I haven't actually redone this. Um, but I'm kind of glad I haven't because here I can give you a prime example of what happens to you know a knot or oil stain underneath um, latex paint when you don't apply that oil-based primer. Now I like to apply my primer with a brush and a roller because a lot of times you're gonna have like little creases on your cabinetry and you're gonna wanna get into all those little nooks and crannies, but you're also going to want a nice smooth finish on the faces of your cabinet doors and the side panels. So you're gonna need to use both a roller and a brush for this. All right, so here are the tools that I use to apply my oil-based primer. I like using this four inch purdy handle, um, little roller applicator. I like this one, not the one with just the little stick because this works with my all-time favorite um, roller, and it's the Worcester Pro, what's it, four and a half inch by one fourth inch, and this is the shed resistant woven one. I'll make sure to link to this below. I have found that this roller right here is the best for cabinets. Now, it does say shed resistant, however, sometimes you might find a little fuzzy here or there, but it is the one that sheds the least, and as you can see, it has the big hole, so you will need one of these. Again, I highly recommend this particular roller because I have used so many. <sighs> this is the one that gives you the nicest, most professional look. I do not recommend at all ever to use a foam roller on your cabinets. And for the roller, I like to use a small disposable plastic tray. Now it's very light. It's, it's about a dollar at your local hardware store. And um, what I like about this particular um, roller as you see these little like lips right here when you have this in something like this it stops it from like going all the way in and getting everything saturated so um as you can see it kind of holds if not it would be all up in there and if it's kind of over full like if you added too much paint in there you can kind of glop up all this and it gets into a hot mess so another reason why i like this little purdy um, roller is because it has that right there all right, so now for the brush. And this little guy right here has been with me for a very long time. I have a couple of these, and these are my all-time favorite brushes. It is a two-inch, purdy, short-handle, synthetic, angled sash brush. Say that three times fast. But it definitely is um, my ride-or-die brush. <clears throat> I like it because of the angle. I like it. You can do very sharp edges with it. The handle is just the most comfortable for my hand. It cleans up very well. 
obviously not the handle, but the bristles. Um, and this is what I prefer. Again, I'll link it down for you guys below. I think it works just fine with both oil base and um, latex paint. I will say, however, I do not mix my brushes. If I use oil base paint for um, uh, with a brush, I will label that brush oil and only use oil base paint with that brush. I also do the same thing with the stirs. And I definitely use a marker, like a Sharpie, to identify which one is the oil-based paint. You do not wanna mix these either. Now, along with this, I use this little nice handy pail for paint. I like this because it adjusts for different hand widths and you know, my husband's hands are a lot bigger than mine, so he needs a little bit more room in here. But you can tighten it up and it goes snugly in your hand and it's, it's great for, if you're having to climb a ladder, like I do because I'm short, and I need to get top <laughs> of my cabinets, well, it holds very well on your hands. You don't have to worry about it falling off. Another thing is great is that it comes with these um, really cute liners so that it, you don't mess up your actual pail. You can just pull this out and um, dispose of it after you're done. Another great thing about this is, is that it has a magnet on the back right here so that your brush doesn't end up falling into the you know, paint because that happens to all of us. So it basically attaches right there and it won't slide into your paint. So I think this is one of the best investments that my husband and I have done. Now I only do one good coat of primer. If you do it well, you take your time and make sure everything is nice and covered. You only need one coat. Now if you can get somebody to help you with the painting of your cabinets, that is awesome. If you have to do it by yourself, I suggest you have both your brush and your roller prepped at the same time because this is kind of like what my husband liked to do in order to get the best effect. Now, I like to use the brush first. I go in and start all of the nooks and crannies, all the indentations, any of the trim that needs to get, you know, you need to get kind of in there. I start it with the brush first. And then he immediately comes behind with the roller and he rolls and smooths everything out. It is best to do both steps back to back because when you have the paint just put on there and still nice and wet, this guy will come in and flatten everything out smoothly. If you let it dry for a little while, it will get a little tacky and the roller won't be able to smooth out any brush strokes that you might have gotten on the flat panel area. So again, do this as quickly as possible. Do the brush in all of the crevices and then go over with the roller to smooth it all out. And I promise it will give you a nice finish. Now, when you're priming the doors, you want to start with the inside of the panel first, because remember, you're gonna have to let that dry, flip it over, and then you're gonna have to do the top. I always, when I paint, I always do any insides first and then always end on the top, because if for any reason the inside gets messed up or you know something, it sticks to one of these, it won't if it's dry, but if it does, <laughs> the inside is a lot easier to hide than the outside of a cabinet door. So always have the intention of starting with the inside panel and finishing with the outside panel of your door. All right, so after you have all of your doors primed, both back and fronts, as well as the base cabinetry and the upper cabinetry that might have been left behind in your kitchen, you are ready to clean those tools. Now, painting with oil-based paint, you're gonna have to clean up with mineral spirits. And this is kind of dusty, it's been in the garage. Um, I like to use the Clean Strip Odorless Mineral Spirits. Now it says odorless, but all mineral spirits have an odor. Um, this is just not as much. <laughs> so yes, just remember, you're gonna have to clean everything out um, with mineral spirits and you might have to check with your local county or state or city um, of how to properly dispose this in your area. But just keep that in mind. Now, the only time we do any sanding on cabinets is after it's been primed. And we usually use a sanding block for this, medium to fine grit, depending on how thick you applied your primer. Now, this is basically to smooth out any streaks or anything that you see that kind of comes out through the primer that you might've missed when you cleaned. But this is honestly the only time my husband is 
pretty much the guy who does this for me. Um, he just sits there and just kind of smooths everything out, both the inside and the outside of the cabinet doors or anything that we might have missed on the cabinetry that has you know been left up on the wall or on the base. Um, but yeah, that's really the only time that we ever sand anything. And it's just light sanding to maybe smooth everything out, any little bumps here or there that might have happened while priming, and get it ready for the actual paint process. Now, of course, you gotta make sure that you take another damp, you know, lint-free cloth and you remove all of the dust before applying your paint. All right, so now we are getting ready for painting. Now that our primer is dry, everything has been cleaned and properly disposed of, we are gonna start painting our cabinets. And this is the kind of paint that I used in this kitchen that you guys saw. And I have actually used this several times over and it is my best paint for the job. So the paint that I'm talking about is Emerald. Let me see if I can show you guys. It's called Urethane Trim Enamel from Sherwin Williams. I'll show it to you right there. It's one of their newer formulas and it is very expensive. I'm not gonna lie. Um, this right now retails for about $93 a gallon. Now, hear me out. Sherwin Williams has sales all the time that range from 30 to 40% off their paints. This is included, okay? So definitely get this type of paint whenever it's on sale. Also, if you think about it, it's still gonna be about 60 or so dollars, but I personally think that if you use a higher quality paint to do the job, it's going to last a lot longer. And if you think about it, you're already saving thousands of dollars from hiring somebody to do the job for you, that it does make sense to get a really nice quality paint in order to paint your cabinets. Now I use, for my particular kitchen, I use the color Extra White. This is the paint that, or the high-end paint, from Sherwin Williams used to paint the trim on your baseboards, on your door frames, window sills, all that kind of stuff. And when they did this and I, um, they created this formula and I used it on my cabinets, I was sold. This isn't even the paint that they recommend for cabinets, but I promise you, I don't like the paint that they recommend for cabinets. I like this stuff. I use it in a semi-gloss. And the reason I use it in a semi-gloss is because I personally don't prefer the really glossy, like. I can see my reflection in my kitchen cabinets, but I don't prefer anything less than semi-gloss because it is, it is highly wipeable. You can wipe anything off your cabinets and it'll come off. And I'm telling you this because this paint right here is so high quality, so wipeable, so amazing. Oh my God, I'm not getting paid for this people but you don't have to use a top coat after you apply this paint. This is why I love it so much. It definitely is expensive, but it saves you a step. And I will show you the difference between something that's painted with this by itself, which is this right here. I'll, I'll do a close up that way you guys can see it versus cabinetry that I've done before where I've actually used something like polycrylic on top of it. I don't like the way it looks and you will definitely see why. So I am actually here in my laundry room and this is one of the very first cabinets that I did when I moved into this home and this is when I was still applying polycrylic on to the surface of my painted cabinets. And as you can see right here, this is what polycrylic does to cabinetry. No matter what finish it is, whether it's matte, semi-gloss, satin, it tends to streak and if you can see it right here where my finger is, it depends on how the light hits it. And honestly, this is in my laundry room, so it doesn't really bother me that much, but in my kitchen, I definitely don't want to finish like that because it does, it is noticeable, as you can see right here how the camera's catching it, and it's more noticeable in person. So this is basically the reason why I don't use polycrylic anymore over my cabinetry. Now here is what my cabinets look like up close. Anything that you see, like these little lines right here, that is all the grain of the actual wood cabinet. And I actually like it shining through. I think it makes it look a little bit more higher end that way. But as you can notice, there, there actually is no, there's no streaks, no streaks at all. Anything that you see on the cabinet is the cabinet finish itself. And there's no streaking any which way you look at it. So this is why I like using that trim enamel paint without a cover or sealer or anything on top of it because it gives you that nice smooth finish 
with no streaking at all whatsoever. And I don't know if you know this, but polycrylic, in order to get the right amount of coverage on your cabinets, you're gonna have to apply it three times. Yes, three times. So if you think about how many times you have to apply it and let it dry, apply it and let it dry, apply it and let it dry, it's gonna save you a lot of time. <laughs> Another thing that you will notice with this paint, and I just wanna just give you a heads up because if you do end up purchasing it, you're gonna notice it. It does have like a different odor to it than your regular paints. It smells like Play-Doh to me. I don't know why, but it smells like Play-Doh. And like, I actually like the way it smells because it's so different, it doesn't smell like paint. One more thing, this paint is so amazing that it can actually be used on exterior walls on the outside of your home. That's why, is another reason why I absolutely love this paint because it is made to withstand the outside elements. So put it inside and you have a formula that will not let you down. Now, I apply this the same exact way as I do my primer. I also use the same type of brushes. I use my angle sash and then I go right behind it and use my nice little roller to get everything nice and smoothed out. However, instead of doing just one coat like I do for my primer, I use two coats, two really nice coats of this paint. And that is all you need. Now, the actual cabinetry that's in your house is really simple to do. You're gonna do once over, and then you're gonna wait till it dries, and then you're gonna do another one. But then there's the doors, right? So what I like to do is, in the morning, I go out and do the inside of the cabinets, let it dry all day. That night, I come back and do the second coat. Then I let it cure overnight before I flip it over. Now, if you live in a very hot climate, if you're doing this over the summertime and it's very humid outside, I would probably let it sit about two nights because you know it's gonna be ready to flip and these things won't affect the paint when you flip it over to paint the other side of the cabinet if it's not sticky. You want it to be very nice and smooth and dry before you do that. Usually one night is enough unless you have really hot and humid temperatures outside and your stuff is in the garage. If you're doing it in like a cool environment, like a basement, you'll just need to do it for overnight. So then I do the same thing for the outsides of the cabinets. Once I flip them over and the tape of which cabinet is what is on the underside that's already been painted, I paint one layer in the morning, let it dry all day, and then come back in the evening and do my second coat. Then I let it cure all overnight before I do anything the following day. Also, since you're gonna be painting several different times with the same paint, you don't have to clean out your tools every single time. Now, I do this with my latex, not with my oil-based paint. Those I actually do. But what you can do is you can take your roller and you can wrap it up in cling wrap from your kitchen. You wrap it up really good and you put it in your refrigerator. Yes, and I actually have one in there as we speak. Um, but it definitely preserves it, keeps it nice and moist and ready for the next application. So you don't have to wash or throw these away. It'll allow you to save a little bit of money. Now I don't do this with my brushes. I only do it with my roller because paint does tend to accumulate in between the bristles and I don't like that. So I have like a little small wire brush where I kind of brush it as I'm washing it underneath the water to get everything out from between the bristles. And yes, I wash this between every single application to make sure that it lasts as long as this little guy has lasted. Now, before I put my doors back, I actually like to get the doors back into the you know environment. Maybe if it's, if it's been out in the garage, I like to bring them into the basement or bring them in somewhere inside the house and let them acclimate. Now, the reason I do this is because enamel paint tends to harden over time, and the longer they sit, the harder they get. The coverage just, it, it just seals the cabinets and creates like a huge top coat layer that hardens. So I actually left them um, about almost a week before putting them back on the cabinet tree. Everything went back on flawlessly, and we were very happy about that. So that is basically it. I know I covered a ton in this video. I know it was a lot of information. I think I covered absolutely everything. If you have any other questions, anything I missed out, anything you're curious about, let me know in the comments below. And there is a lot of steps to this process. However, if you do it right, if you follow everything, if you don't get too ahead of yourself and you know, sometimes we see something coming to fruition and we kinda wanna hurry up the process and we wanna get it done, 
Definitely this is one of those things where you want to take your time and you want to do it right from start to finish so that the actual end product will last you many years to come. Again, this is my personal opinion. This is what I recommend. This is what I use. And this is what I stand behind. You will definitely get a lot of satisfaction by doing this yourself. And um, this is honestly the best process and the best way to get near to professional finish on your kitchen cabinets. I hope this was informative. I hope you got something out of this. Make sure you give this video a like, share it with your friends who maybe have been thinking about, you know, changing up their kitchen. This is definitely a way to go when you don't have the budget to have somebody else do it for you or to replace your cabinets entirely. And I love nothing more than to be able to help you guys try to figure out how to get the best look for your home for a whole lot less. All right then, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Until then, adios.